Well, our topic is the verb. So, did you notice something different in the way German treats its verb forms? Maybe you noticed in our little film scene that the verb endings changed according to who was talking. In English, we only have an additional s ending in the he, she, and it form, as in she goes, he speaks, it works. But in German, the endings differ from person to person. But there are two more things that are slightly different in German. First, German has a different u for speaking to one person or for speaking to a group, like in the colloquial u's that you hear in Australia sometimes. And secondly, we have a special formal polite form if we address people we don't know very well. Let's have a close look at the singular verb forms first, with say the verb gehen, to go. Ich gehe. Du gehst. Er, sie, es geht. As you can see, the first part of the verb, which we call the stem, normally stays the same, and you'll be glad to hear that the endings for all the different persons follow the same pattern for all regular verbs too. So it is. Ich komme. Du kommst. Er, sie, es kommt. From kommen to come, or. Ich wohne. Du wohnst. Er, sie, es wohnt. From wohnen to live. You can easily memorize the three singular endings as Eastern Standard Time. Let's add the plural forms now. Wir gehen, ihr geht, sie gehen. Ihr is the plural form of du that I was talking about before when I mentioned use. Both mean you in English, but du is singular informal and ihr is plural informal. Note that the we and they forms have the same ending, en. And that en is also the ending of the infinitive. The infinitive is the non-specific form to go, gehen, you see in your vocabulary list. So you don't have to learn a separate ending for the wir and sie forms. Note too that the he, she, it and you plural form also have an identical ending, t. Now I said before that there's also a formal or polite form in German with which you address anybody you don't know extremely well. So it's actually very important. The form is Sie gehen. And fortunately, it has the same form in singular and plural. And as you can see, it also has the already familiar ending en, like the infinitive, and the we and they forms. Even though people nowadays are a bit less formal, the rule is still that you should use sie if you're in doubt. In other words, if the people you address are not family, close friends, or fellow students, use the polite form. So when you're in Germany, use sie and let your German acquaintance make the offer to you that you change to the familiar du form. Then you can't go wrong. All the forms together at one glance are Ich gehe, du gehst, er, sie, es geht, sie gehen, formal, wir gehen, ihr geht, sie gehen, sie gehen, formal. One last thing about these endings. Verbs with a T or D at the end of the stem add an E in the second and third person singular, the du and the er, sie, es form, and the second person plural, ihr. It's very difficult to say Du arbeitst. You work. Or Du badst. You bathe. So it is Du arbeitest. Er, sie, es, arbeitet. Ihr arbeitet. Du badest. Er, sie, es badet. Ihr badet. By the way, we're only talking about the forms of the verb in the present tense at the moment. We'll investigate how to form the past tenses a bit later. But something we must add is that there's only one form of the present tense in German. Where in English we say, I am going. I go. I do go. In German we just say Ich gehe. 
So German might have a few more endings, but in other ways, it's actually simpler than English. We'll see this time and again. German tends to be more exact and detailed in its grammatical forms generally, but compensates by being more logical and systematic than English. It's actually quite fascinating to compare the two languages, and we'll try to make you aware of what happens in English grammar when we discuss a German grammatical topic. We can actually offer you another grammatical area that's considerably easier to handle in German than in English: forming questions. You might have noticed that the verb usually comes second after the subject in a normal German statement, as in: Ich fahre nach Brisbane. Er arbeitet in Perth. So, how do we form questions in German? In English, we either have to use the auxiliary verb to do in order to form questions: Do you work? Or the progressive form, as in, are you working today? In German, we simply swap subject and verb and raise our voice at the end of the sentence. So the statement, du arbeitest, becomes the question, arbeitest du? And the statement, du arbeitest heute, becomes the question, arbeitest du heute? If we use question words or interrogatives, as they're sometimes called, like wo, where. Or was, what? We just stick the question word in front and ask. Wo arbeitest du? Wann arbeitest du? Easy, isn't it? But wait, there's more. In English, we also use the auxiliary to do or the progressive form to make a statement negative, as in I don't work and he's not going to Sydney. In German, again, it's a lot easier because all we do to negate a statement is to put the word nicht immediately after the verb, and we get. Ich arbeite nicht. Er geht nicht nach Sydney. Nicht usually follows straight after the verb it's negating, but there are a few sentence elements that can squeeze in between the verb and nicht, like specific adverbs of time, for example, heute, or am Montag. So we get. Ich arbeite heute nicht. Er arbeitet am Montag nicht. We'll look into this in more detail in the negation module. But now it's time to go off to the verb gym for a bit of training, and it'll be a lot easier than lifting weights.